Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a QEMU virtual machine, how to create a QEMU hypervisor in a Windows operating system and create a Linux virtual machine. Virtualization is the easiest way to run one more operating system on your PC without having to install it directly to its hard disk. Instead, the additional operating system is installed to a virtual disk, which is represented by a special container file. The most popular hypervisors are VirtualBox and VMware, and they both have a wide range of functions and an easy-to-understand graphical interface. QEMU is a free open-source program designed to emulate various software products and operating systems. This tool uses hardware virtualization and supports a long list of architectures to be emulated. The first thing you need for installation is to download a QEMU distribution for Windows. You can get it from the official website. You can choose between 32-bit and 64-bit versions. We need the 64-bit one, so choose and download the corresponding file. Install the program and leave all options at their default values. Just don't change anything and click Next. Unlike VirtualBox and similar hypervisors, QMU doesn't have a graphical interface. It can be operated with the command prompt only. Let's download an ISO image of the operating system, which we will install onto the virtual machine. After that, we need to add the QMU path to the environment variables. To do that, open the file explorer and copy the path to the folder containing the program. Then, right-click on this PC and open Properties. Advanced System Settings. In the Advanced tab, open Environment Variables. In the field User Variables, double click on the Path variable, then click New, paste the path to the QMU folder that you have copied before, click OK to save the changes, and then click OK again to leave the settings. Before installation, you need to enable a specific Windows component, Windows Hypervisor Platform, or the virtual machine may not start properly. Also, it is recommended to enable Hyper-V or HAXM Accelerator to make the virtual machine work faster. To do it, use the setting Turn Windows Features On or Off. Enable the platform. The list of commands and settings used to create and manage virtual machines is quite long, but you only need a few to start working. Launch the command prompt as administrator and begin the installation. For starters, let's create a folder for virtual machines. Then go to that folder with the command prompt. Now you need to create a virtual hard disk of 15 to 20 GB. Use the following command for this step. Where the setting F indicates the file format followed by the file name and the file size is given at the end of the command. Then enter another command to create a virtual machine. It includes certain settings. The architecture, the boot disk, the virtual machine RAM size, the number of processors allocated for this machine, the path to the folder containing the program, the graphics, the sound, the virtual disk, the path to its ISO image, the time and network settings. When you enter the command, the QMU window appears, the virtual machine boots and the installation of the operating system begins. In my case, this is Ubuntu.
After the installation is complete and the virtual machine restarts, it boots with the operating system you have installed, and it is now ready for work. Also, there is another way to create a virtual machine with the help of the QTEMU graphical interface. This open-source utility for QEMU is designed to simplify the process of creating and managing a virtual machine. Let's visit the program's official website, follow the link to GitLab, and download the installation file. Remember to enable such Windows feature as Windows Hypervisor Platform, if you forgot to turn it on before. This feature should be running, otherwise the virtual machine may not start. To do it, open Programs and Features, turn Windows features on or off. Start the installer and choose where to install the program. After the installation is over, put the program's shortcut on the desktop for your convenience and create a folder to store virtual machine files. When you start the program for the first time, specify the following settings. In the first field, the path to the folder where QMU is installed. In the second field, the path to the QMU IMG file. And in this field, the path to the folder where virtual machine files are stored. and then click Finish. To create a new virtual machine, click Machine, New Machine, give a name, Operating System Type, select its version and then click Next. In this machine page, click Next unless you need to choose a specific motherboard setup. After that, you should choose a proper CPU type and configure the graphics, sound and network settings. If you get the wrong CPU, the virtual machine may not boot properly. Now you need to choose the accelerator. The default choice is HAXM. Some computers may not support this technology, so I recommend to uncheck this box for HAXM and choose TCG instead, then click Next. Sometimes users complain that nothing happens when they start a virtual machine. This problem can be caused by HAXM, so it's always better to go for TCG to make sure the virtual machine will work on most computers. After that, set the RAM size for the virtual machine. and create a virtual hard disk. Specify the disk size and type. Then click Finish to complete setup. After that, right-click on the machine and choose Machine Settings. Access Boot Options and check the box for a CD-ROM. Then bring it to the top and enable boot menu. Then jump to the media tab. Click on the disk icon and give the path to an ISO image file or the operating system. And then click Save. Select the virtual machine and click here to start it. The QMU window opens and the operating system installer boots. When the installation process is over, the virtual machine will be ready to use. 
All right, we have just explored the process of installing QMU and creating a virtual machine. But what should you do if, for any reason, you lost access to your virtual machine, deleted the machine files by accident, or lost some mission-critical data stored on the virtual hard disk? If that's your case, use a specialized data recovery tool, Hetman Partition Recovery, which can work successfully with most file formats used in popular hypervisors. It supports all popular file systems formats, and it can help you restore data after deleting, formatting, and hardware or software errors. In a Windows operating system, all you have to do is to download and install the program. If you are using a different operating system, take the hard disk out of your computer and connect it to a Windows PC. If you want to recover virtual machine files, connect the disk where virtual disk files were stored and scan it with Hetman Partition Recovery. Right-click on the disk and choose Open. Select the scan type, Fast Scan or Full Analysis if the first option is not available. Before starting Full Analysis, choose the file system and click Next. In my case, Fast Scan is available. Find the folder where the virtual machine files were stored, select the files you want to restore, click Recovery. Specify the path where you'd like to save the files and click Recovery again. You will find the recovered files in the directory you have chosen. If, for some reason, you couldn't boot the virtual machine after recovery, or there is an error when you try to start the machine, don't worry. Upload the file to our program and use it to restore your data. To do it, open Tools, Mount Disk, and you'll find two ways to mount it. Choose a raw disk image if you are dealing with conventional disks, or choose virtual machines. You can see the list of files and tools that our program supports. Check the required image type. Give the path to the folder containing virtual hard disk files and click Select Folder. The program will display all virtual machine files which exist in such folder. And you can uncheck the boxes for the ones you don't need now. To begin searching for data, right-click on the disk and choose Open. Then choose Analysis Type. We recommend starting with FastScan. If the program can't find the missing files, then go for Full Analysis. You can see that the program can find all files remaining on the disk without difficulty. The red cross indicates the ones which have been deleted. Click on a file to see its contents in the preview window. With this quick search option, you can find a specific file by its name. Select the files you need to restore and click Recovery. Specify the disk where to save the files and click Recover again. Summing up, what can we say about the QMU hypervisor? It's difficult to say if it's better or worse than VirtualBox or VMware. Uh, more likely, it's an alternative method of virtualization and it has its own pros and cons. QMU is less convenient, it requires you to know the manuals, and its performance is very moderate. To accelerate its work in Windows, you need to install and configure AHXM, the Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager. On the other hand, this tool lets you emulate work on various architectures which are not supported by popular hypervisors. And if you ever lose any data, now you know which recovery tool can bring it back in a most efficient way. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck. While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments on the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. 
Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's desirable invasion.